All righty. Well, hey, good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to the Monterey Bay Aquarium, live all across the internet. We should be live here very soon, if not right now, on Twitch, on YouTube, on Twitter, and on Facebook. And just to make sure that that is the case, if you folks out there who might be tuning in right now, if you could give me a quick thumbs up there in the comments, let me know that we are live, and especially if you can hear me, making sure the audio is looking good. Appreciate everybody that is tuning in right now. Thank you so much, everybody, for joining us. My name's Patrick. I work for the Monterey Bay Aquarium social media team, and we are live right now from the back deck watching the counterpart of this morning's king tide, the low tide portion here of the king tides that are happening today. So I just want to make sure everybody can hear me. I want to make sure that the stream is functioning. Looking good, live and clear, good audio. Okay, wonderful. Great stuff. Okay. All right, well, I'm on YouTube, I'm on Facebook, I'm on Twitch and Twitter, taking a look at all of you wonderful folks coming in and tuning in. Hello, thank you so much for joining us. All right, we'll take that intro one more time. Welcome, everybody, to the back deck of the Monterey Bay Aquarium some six hours later uh, from this morning's stream. If you haven't gotten to take a look at that, take a look at our uh, Twitch VOD over on our YouTube channel, on our Facebook, on our Twitter. You can see those posts from earlier this morning when this tide pool and the extensive reef that is going here along Canary Row was completely hidden by that king tide, those massive tidal swings that we have this time of year. We talked about it a little bit earlier today, why we have the tides, and the tides are due to the gravitational pull of the moon pulling on the ocean, trying to pull the ocean away from the earth towards itself with its gravitational pull, and that creates a standing wave, as it were, of the ocean that is bulging out towards the moon and in the same direction on the opposite side of the planet. And then at right angles to that bulge, we've got the low tides. Inside that bulge are the high tides. So we've got the lunar tides that are a thing. We also have solar tides where the sun, even though it's much further away from Earth, also has an effect of pulling on the ocean and making the tide extend or the ocean extend out so that we have those tides. The other aspect of the tides that we talked about this morning is that it's not just the sun and the moon pulling on the ocean. The other thing that's happening is that the earth, as you know, the definition of a day is the earth spinning around on itself once a day. But the moon orbits the earth every 29 or so days, every, every month, as it were. That's where you get the word month is from the moon. So you've got that rotation of the earth that's faster than the orbit of the moon around the earth, which means that that bulge of the ocean, that extension of the ocean away from uh, the earth itself out towards the moon, that is going much slower than the spinning of the earth, which is why we get those two low tides, those two high tides during the day. As the earth is spinning through the tide, we get the low tide and the high tide. So this morning, we were spinning into that ocean being pulled towards the moon and the sun and now we have spun out of it, and you can see the ocean's not here anymore. The ocean has left the building, uh, literally, or literally, as I should say, because you can see right now that our great tide pool is once again a tide pool, and that we have water flowing out of the tide pool right now, because this is where the water returns to the Monterey Bay from the aquarium. We're pumping it in, about 2,000 gallons of water per minute uh, in our system, about 1,500 gallons of water into the aquarium, and that water goes through the entire exhibit hall and then back out into the tide pool, back out into the bay from whence it came. So you can see right now, if I zoom in even just a little bit, whoop, that's the focus. Let me zoom in right there. Let's see. There you go. You can see that trickle of water. That's the exhibit water that is returning to the bay right now. And so the reason that we have the king tides, we talked about that a little bit earlier. If you were watching... Um, if you're watching Emily's Instagram story a little bit earlier, just a few minutes before we went live here, the reason for the king tides that we have right now is because this time of year in December and January is when the 
moon is going to be the closest in its orbit to the Earth at the same time that the Earth is the closest in its orbit to the sun. And so when you have the sun and the moon pulling in the same direction on the ocean, you get what's known as a spring tide. It has nothing to do with the time of year. It just means the ocean is springing out towards um, those celestial bodies. And then you have the neap tide, which is at the right angle. And that is this low tide that we're looking at right now. And so if we have the highest tides, we also have the lowest tides because the ocean has to go somewhere else. And right now, because the Earth is approaching its closest pass of the sun, this is also the same time that the moon is approaching its closest in its orbit to Earth. That happens once a month. And then you also have the what's known as a syzygy, which we talked about a little bit earlier. If you folks remember from this morning, if anybody in the chats here across the various platforms on Twitch, on YouTube, on Facebook, uh, NEAP, N-E-A-P tide there, Yoink 12, yeah. Um, and so a, a king tide is a very high spring tide. So that was the clarification I want to make. The NEAP tide is this low tide where we have the lowest tides because this is at right angles to the pole of the sun and the moon. But what's happening when we have the spring tides is what's known as a syzygy. And if you can spell that, it's pretty fun. Um, a syzygy is when you have the sun, the moon, and earth all aligned. And that happens during the full moon and the new moon. The, moon, the new moon is tomorrow, and the full moon is going to be half a month from now. And that new moon tomorrow is when we're having the official king tides. So this right here is not even the lowest tide of the week tomorrow. Right now, what we're looking at is a negative 1.3 foot high tide, and it's going to go all the way out to a negative 1.7 foot high tide by Sunday. And on Sunday, we're also going to have a 6.9 foot high tide. And so let me show you, actually, I almost forgot here. Here's a photo of what this same view looked like this morning. So if I just pull up this photo real quick, there we go. So that is what we were looking at earlier this morning. Same view. You can see how high the ocean is flowing into our great tide pool. And right now the tide has gone out. But as we mentioned, that's just our perception. The tide is just moving with the moon and the earth is spinning through it. And so we get that high and that low. Now, what does this mean? Well, it means a few things for uh, different animals. In the low intertidal, what you're looking at right here, to, our, to the left of the screen, all of that rock that's exposed, these are animals that are used to living life between being out of the water and being underwater. And right now, this time of year, is when some animals that are almost never out of the water are going to be out of the water for a few hours. And so that can be extreme for them right now. This area is doing a very good job of keeping our inter intertidal animals nice, safe, and healthy because we have this nice marine layer that is shading us from the sun, keeping things cool and moist. So for right now, the intertidal animals, they're doing, they're, they're doing okay. It's not going to be too extreme. But imagine if, I mean, you don't have to imagine. Imagine if you had to breathe air every single day, and then for a few hours, you just could not breathe any air. That's what happens during the high tide. During the low tide, imagine if you're always underwater and then suddenly you have to deal with this, this dry stuff, this air that can be very, very difficult to deal with, especially for squishy bodied animals that are used to being completely submerged. So we always like to give a huge shout out to the intertidal animals because they are the extreme athletes of the animal world out there hanging out between the two, the two worlds, I'm going to say world one more time, that we have on our planet of being up here on the land where we are and being under the water. These animals live between those two. And this time of year is when the highest intertidal animals that are almost never wet are getting submerged. And then you have the lowest intertidal animals that are almost always submerged being exposed to the air for the first time um, in a long time. So if I zoom in here and just show you a few things that are a little bit new, a little bit novel for us here. We have there in the middle some surf grass. Surf grass is definitely one of those marine plants that is really only revealed at the lowest tides. It is a plant, not an alga, so it's a flowering plant. It has little, little flowers, little seeds that it has underwater. 
And so that is a true plant. And then all around, we have all of this red algae along the rocks. We also have mussels that are used to being exposed now and again, but sometimes you've got some of the nicer mussels down lower for the otters and the gulls that are coming by. And then just looking along here, I mean, there's going to be a lot of gunnels, rock crabs, uh, anemones, just loads of organisms that are not used to being out of the water exposed right now. And tomorrow is going to be even bigger of a tidal shift. Now, part of the reason that we do this King Tides live stream every year, and we're very glad to be able to offer you two of these King Tide streams during the year. Oh, I guess during that whole time I had the, the image there on the screen, so we may not have even seen the seagrass that I was pointing out. I'll take that away now. There we go. But the reason we talk about this every year with those high tides, with these king tides, it's because, like we mentioned this morning, like Emily mentioned in her Instagram live that we just did, these king tides, these extremely high tides that are very impressive and can cause a lot of damage along the coastline if there's a storm or some other activity going on, some big winds or big waves, that extra high water can come. And as you can see here at the aquarium, can really affect our back deck. But it also floods roads. It can cause a lot of property uh, issues over here in the Monterey Bay area, Lake El Estero, which you might know as being the area with the little paddle boats right before the tunnel on your way to the aquarium. That is a part that used to be connected to the ocean. And as the sea level rises because of a few different things related to climate change, but one of the main insidious things about sea level rise that's happening right now is just the thermal expansion of the ocean. You might know that if you boil water, it expands in volume. Well, if you heat up the ocean, considering it's so huge, when you heat up that ocean, it expands in volume ever so slightly, maybe a few millimeters, a few centimeters over the decades, and that adds up to a whole lot of effect along the coast, especially here at the aquarium where you can truly see its effect as it washes up along the building. And so the reason that we're talking about these king tides today is because you folks might be coming down to the coast tomorrow, wherever you happen to be along the west coast here, but in particular in California, if you're visiting the shoreline, Take a photo of that high tide. It's going to be happening tomorrow around 9 a.m. And then there's going to be another high tide happening on Sunday around 10 a.m. And if you take those photos and you hashtag them, hashtag king tides, then the folks that are studying this sea level rise, the way that our coastline is going to be impacted by these rising seas, coastal planners, city planners, uh, aquariums, uh, folks that have to deal with the roads, the beach maintenance, etc. They'll use those photos to help plan out what the future looks like for us living here along the coast as the ocean decides to reclaim some of that land. So if you're coming down to the coast tomorrow, 9 a.m., take some photos. If you see anything flooding, anything like that, take those photos. Tag them on Instagram, on Twitter, wherever you're uploading them with hashtag King Tides or head over to the California King Tides Project uh, which we'll have a link here in the chat. You can also head over to the Monterey Bay Aquarium website, MontereyBayAquarium.org. There's King Tides 101 over there, and you will know what to do with those images that you might be taking. Because this is a very, a very special situation where we get to see a little bit of that sea level rise that's happening in the future today. And so I have the link here. I'm going to put it in real quick. And yeah, for those of you folks that are tuning in right now who were here earlier this morning, yeah, what a difference a few hours make there. Oh, and over there on Twitch, just want to give a huge thanks to the gifted sub there by Yoink12. Thank you for your support over there. Okay, so maybe what I'll do is I'll pull up this image one more time to show you what it looked like earlier this morning, around 9 a.m. This right here is that same view of that 6.7 foot high tide that we had mere hours ago. So you can really see how drastic these changes are this time of year. And if you miss these king tides, if you're not able to come down to the coast, not to worry. 
we are going to be officially the closest to the sun as a planet, all of us together. We're doing it. We're pushing our planet forward. We will officially be the closest to our sun on January 4th. And so there will be king tides happening, I believe, January 2nd. Um, and that is because you got the, the sun and the moon got to do their dance together and you will be able to see more of those king tides. Yes, so January 2nd and 3rd plus January 1st north of Ventura County, we will have some more king tides here in California. So if you miss these ones, if you're not coming down to the coast, you really want to see what that looks like, you have another opportunity in one month to come down and take a closer look at what those king tides are doing. And with that, I'm going to see if there are any questions that we need to answer here from the chat. I'll start over on Facebook and maybe I'll just take down this image real quick so we can just enjoy the back deck of the aquarium. For those of you who may be wondering, the great tide pool that we have here off the back deck is inspired by John Steinbeck and Ed Ricketts's great tide pool that is located over by Point Pinos near the golf course over uh, along Ocean View Boulevard over past the lighthouse area in Pacific Grove. So if you're ever here and you want to come see what the real Great Tide Pool is, you can see it live over at Point Pinas, right by the lighthouse near the old Noah building that has the Ray Troll artwork on it, for those of you who are familiar with the local area. All right, let's take a look at some of those questions here. All right, looking good, all right. Syzygy, we have a winner there with Nicole Bridges over on Facebook, got it first. But a lot of folks in there that are spelling it. We know we went over that this morning, the Syzygy, the Neap Tides, wonderful. And, uh, All right, it looks like we looks like we pretty well answered all of your questions over there on Facebook. Let me head over to Twitch. Anybody on Twitch got some questions? What is the difference in the height of the water over a meter? Question mark. That's a great question. We have a eight foot tidal swing, give or take, in our area. Eight point six feet, which is two point six two meters. Eight point six feet. Emily's got the stats. She's got it figured out. Eight point six feet, and that is two point. 2.62 meters. So yeah, quite the tidal swing here, but things get way more extreme in different parts of the world depending on what your body of water is doing. The Monterey Bay is pretty well open to the, the wild Pacific. There are certain areas like in Hawaii, the tidal swings are not as drastic um, just because of their location on the planet. But there are also uh, areas like the Bay of Fundy and the Northern Gulf of California where the tidal swings can be over 30 feet at some of the biggest tidal swings. So it's not uncommon to have people laying out an experiment and then a few hours later going scuba diving to go take a look at what that experiment is picking up in these areas where the tide is swinging so wide. You gotta imagine that that lump of ocean, that ocean extension, the extent ocean, as we'll call it right now and never again, uh, heading out towards the moon, that is a huge lump of water that we spin through. And depending on how much your area is funneling the ocean in and out or where the ocean has access to leave and go to, that volume of water that you have sloshing back and forth affects how high your tides end up being. So these are not the most extreme tides in the world by any means, but 8.6 feet, that is 1.5 feet, one and a half feet taller than me. Uh, so if I was standing out here right now, later tomorrow morning, I would be completely submerged in the water. So it's not insignificant and has a lot of effect on our buildings, has a lot of effect on our roads, our, our infrastructure, as you have probably noticed coming to Monterey, we like to build right up next to the ocean along the coastline. And if the ocean is rising and if it has this predictable future, then we need to start making some plans now to figure out what that looks like. And maybe that means that the Monterey Bay Aquarium starts offering snorkel tours in the future, or maybe you'll come to the aquarium sometime and this view will have the aquarium up on stilts, who knows? Or maybe one giant float. <laughs> We're still figuring out exactly the technological details there. All right. 
Well, with that, everybody, we wanted to say thank you so much for being followers, supporters, viewers of the Monterey Bay Aquarium content out here on social media. Thank you so much for tuning in for these California King Tide streams. It's been our pleasure to be able to show you some of the activity that happens here off the back deck of the aquarium all the time. The aquarium's mission is to inspire conservation of the ocean. So whenever you folks are here watching what we're talking about, sharing with your friends, helps us expand the understanding of our ocean world and helps us continue our mission. And in particular right now, those king tides tomorrow, 9 a.m. and then 10 a.m. on Sunday. If you're down by the coast, you get to visualize the future of sea level rise. Imagine if those high tides that are happening tomorrow and the next day are your average ho-hum, who cares, high tides. What kind of effect will that have along our coastline? Something to think about. Thanks everybody for watching. We will see you again soon at the Monterey Bay Aquarium. We hope you have a fantastic rest of your evening and weekend enjoying these king tides. Thanks everybody.